How are we going, everybody? Guess where I am? That's right. Have you guessed it already? I'm at Coburg. I'm back in the metro area. Wow. <laughs> I miss my home already. But anyway, folks, I'm down here at the garden centre. We're going to, well, it is open, and we're going to keep adding to this place. We're in the beer garden or the beer al fresco area. It's a mess. We haven't been here for four years, and I've come back to this nightmare. Not the store, the planting. Now, along the front here, oh, I'd say about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, I planted ballerina apples, dwarf nectarine peach, lemon, olive, and uh, orange. Now, let's quickly go through the problems here. Now, I haven't been here for four years, and whoever maintained these whilst I haven't been here did a really bad job. And what I mean by a bad job is these Spalia oranges. And don't mind the noise in the background because that's what it is here, a highway. Look at this orange tree here. One side's growing, the other side's dying. Now this orange tree, look, the, the pruning is all wrong. Um, I had it well established, especially on this side, but they've obviously done something to it. And I'm not gonna uh, speculate that it was something sinister, but it certainly wasn't good for it because the tree's gone backwards. So we've almost lost the orange tree. We're gonna bring that back to life. See all those cuts? I've just cut that back, folks, and it's been pretty, pretty hard having to cut it back in that such way because there's been a lot of dieback and a lot of, you know, dead wood on there. That's not the worst of it. That's probably, that's easy. I can bring that back to life in the next couple of years by a couple of prune, pruning techniques. My biggest concern are these ballerina apples. Now, whether it's the pruning that was wrong on these things or whether the frost got them, um, the bacteria got in there that's what and what i'm talking about is uh burnots uh crown gall or even canker and what it, what they look like are lumps on the branches look at these just swelling out like that they start off a little bit soft and they come up to be really hard and they can grow from there and what i mean by growing come down to here this this tree is literally covered in it it does deform the tree and in actual fact it affects the dna on it the bacteria leaves a little bit of dna in the plant causing it to uh, transform and change in some ways and the most obvious one are these lumps down right at the bottom down right at the bottom crown gall look at that it's swelling and that happens on the graft union too so it's not just from pruning it's also the grafting technique now these are from a reputable grower and we've had them here for about 15 years and they are completely affected not only this one every single one of them i'm not going to blame the people who were running the place here before us because this could have happened to anybody in any way. The bacteria in the soil enters the tree through an open wound by pruning, um, dirty secateurs or even from frostbite damaging the outer bark on the tree. These have been on here for years um, and when they get to this stage really there's not a lot you can do besides cutting the tree and in honest fact these trees need to come out. The ballerina apples they should come out if I had another orchard here nearby which I don't so they're staying. We're gonna clean them up, we're gonna maintain it, we're gonna try and monitor it, do some spraying, but it's internal. There's nothing that we can do on the outside that's really gonna work 100% and protect the tree. So we've got a problem, and not only that, look at the growth on it. Honestly, the last four years that I haven't been here, these haven't been pruned, so I can't blame them. And if they have been pruned, they've done a real bad job of it. This is not how you prune a ballerina apple. Moving on, peach and nectarines. This is one here that's grown through the fence and it's had a heap of leaf curl on it. So we're gonna clean this one up. This is okay, the tree. Oh, let's compare it. Look at this one here. That ballerina, have a look at this one. Not a single gall on it, no canker on it, no crown burrs on it or anything. So this is really clean. That's how you want your tree to look, but come over here. Oh, just ignore the dead olive tree and see the canker down there, the crown gall. All right, there's another one there. But let's get serious now, okay? I know olive trees really well, and I love growing my olive trees. I've been around to different countries and seen lots of olive trees, hundreds of years old. This one here is about 15 years old. And when I turned up, folks, it was, it was basically dry. I didn't want to show you this, but I'm going to show you this. Have a look at it. This is what was on the tree. This, is, this didn't dry up on the ground. This was exactly how it was on the tree. So needless to say, there was no care, no care factor, and it was complete neglect. And the olive tree will survive that, but once you start seeing die back, what's killed this, I don't know. But it's not 100% dead, which is what I'm excited about, because I'm gonna try and bring it back to life. I don't know if the trunk's alive. Let's have a look. 
What do you reckon? It's pretty dead. It's actually very dead. Oh, look, we've got life. That's the life we've got there. This, is a this was a beautiful, beautiful espalier olive tree, folks. These are the ones that I built yeah, 15 years ago. Two posts in the ground, still rod, shaped up, and we talk about the horizontal framework. I did that to this and it worked a treat. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna bring this one back to life. If I do, it's gonna to be too little too late. So it might have to come out. Last one. And normally when it comes to espaliering trees, like uh, citrus trees, we, you've seen the ones at my place on the farm there. We've got them as a fan shape. So you've seen the lime tree, orange, mandarin, and lemon, which is starting to come on. But I did a lemon here in the formal espalier. Rather than doing it as a fan as I have at home, this one was grown formal espalier. <coughs> and it hasn't been pruned properly either, by the, by the way. But I've come in and cleaned it up because you're stepping on the branches. That's right, they're all on the ground. And we got a bucket load of fruit on here as well. There's fruit up there, there's plenty of fruit. All these branches got to this thickness because somebody wasn't pruning them. They're not meant to get that thick. You're meant to keep them short. And eventually, they start to produce fruit. See that there? Short little stubs, cut them back. Look at this, little clusters. Then you remove all the other side little branches which become, you know, useless. You don't need them all. Clean all this up. You keep a few flowers and you get lots of fruit. And here's the fruit again. So for those who think you can't espalier, formal espalier, lemon trees, citrus trees, think again because you can. It's just the pruning technique and the patience. You have to be patient and allow the plant to do its course of growth. And when you see some sort of spike of growth, leave that a little bit and work on other parts that are not growing. And then come back to it. If it's not a flower, then you can cut it back and shape it. But also the black grid and the wood ash that we put in it to stimulate flowering and to keep the fruit. So we're down here at the garden center, folks. I'm gonna work on these in the next few weeks and months and I suppose years if we're still here, which we tend to be. Pop down today, I'm on radio. So if you just tuned in uh, while we uploaded this, Switch over to 3, uh, 693 3 Radio with me and Darren talking gardening, weekend gardening. And if you've got a lazy afternoon or day on Sunday, swing past down here at Kovic, say hello, meet and greet, click and collect. We've got 20% off the already discounted price on everything here. It's dirt cheap for today only. And if you can't get down, you can use the coupon code Kovic to get your extra discount in our easy hand sprayers. They're available as a pre-order. Do not miss out because they are selling fast. Place your orders today to lock your spray in place so when they turn up, you'll get yours delivered. All at thesillysgarden.com. From Eva Silly, Maresi.